So in my talks, those of you who have more of a science training, if you want to talk to me about biochemistry, uh, probability, quantum probability, mathematics, topology, I'm happy to talk to you. But for, for this, for the larger group, I want to make it more intuitive, right? Something that you could really internalize for your yoga practice and for your life. Because after all, most every, I hear a lot of sound going on. And if you teach yoga, you do om when you teach yoga. And so it's very important to understand, or you teach mantras, what, what's really going on at that level. So a sound, and by the way, this is your... That's your inner ear. Everybody has two of those. Looks like a conch shell, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Everybody has. You'll find out later that your whole body is basically a vibrational receiver. You know, you, you, your senses all receive vibration. We are vibrational beings. That's science. It's very interesting that as we go into it, when, when the physicist at the turn of the century, Einstein, Max Planck, uh, uh, Heisenberg, Schopenhauer, when they discovered the quantum, they, discovered, they said, we discovered at a micro level a vibrational universe. They had no way to relate to it, none. But they did, they went to India. They went to India and they studied Vedanta. And they said, only here can we find a way to understand what we are looking at. What we're observing quantitatively, they know qualitatively. So therefore, they all went to India to study Vedanta. And that's the same thing. They needed to have, they, they could see it, they could observe vibrational behaviors. They made the mistake in the beginning, a mistake that really we're all paying for in a way because they said the observer, the vibrational behaviors we're observing at a quantum level have nothing to do with reality as we know it. That's a mistake. And then all the things that we talk about in meditation, we talk about in, in the, with Pastanjali and the sutras and so on. To them, it was all made up. It was just a joke. And yet, when you begin to look at the experiences of the great gurus, what they talk about, they're really relating the application of vibrational behaviors in everyday life, which is really my talk tomorrow, how to do that therapeutically. We live in a vibrational universe. We say, how is it that the rishis, so, by the way, the, the, the Nanabindu Upanishad was written 200 BCE, before the Common Era, before Christ, 200 years. We're talking about 2,200 years ago, they discovered the very principles of vibrational behaviors that quantum physicists talk about today. Now, we, quantum physicists quantify it, and when they first quantified it, they said this could never happen in in normal life, the way we see things, that's all changed too. The research out there now is we have quantum computers, we're getting quantum by location. All of this is taking place on a real physical plane. The rush now is for how can we actualize that and quantify it in everyday life. Just right now, I believe, I'm speaking here, and am I not speaking all over uh, through Facebook all over the place? There you go. It's the astral plane manifested here on Earth. I could be here talking to you, but I'm also all, simultaneously all over the place. That's quantum behavior. That's vibrational behavior. So we want to begin to understand ourselves as vibrational beings. We want to understand therapy from a vibrational viewpoint. It doesn't negate anything. It helps us enhance everything. So this is a sound wave. Like, so if you, if you flip a rope and you go like this, it hits and it's tied to a tree, it comes back, and it goes like this and comes back. It makes what's called a standing wave or a wave. And when you look at the wave, it has two aspects. What's called nodes, the little dots that you see in the middle are nodes, and the dots at the peaks are anti-nodes. So the string is vibrating like this. So... The, the anti-nodes are just the vibration of the string. They can, so the dots can change their position and how far apart they are, and that would make the vibration of the string higher or lower in pitch. But to have something vibrating, you always have to have vibration and notes. So notes are something we don't usually talk about. 
but I'm going to. So the next slide here is, if you turn the sound wave on its side, it would look like, oops, like this. It's the same wave we saw before, oops, here, but now I turned it on its side. So we look at something in yoga, we call this the caduceus, uh, or ingawa, in, 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 I do the Sanskrit. In, in, can, can you help me spell me ingawa, uh, pinata, I don't know. <laughs> Pin, I, I, not pinata. <laughs> that would be the moral. But, <laughs> no, but this three, the three principles, it's wave, it's form, and it's pulsation in the middle, and in the very middle of this is a node, or still point. And if we transfer this over, we see our chakras, right? And you know, I want you to notice the chakras all have flowers, but they have geometric designs, right? So the chakras basically would be the nodal dots. In the very center of the chakra would be a node, and the caduceus is constantly vibrating like this. That's a vibrational being. And if we look at ourselves as vibrational beings, we look more like this is from flirty therapy, Oops. We can see we're just basically spinning energy all the time in different frequencies everywhere we go. And the ancients called this uh, ether, air, fire, water, earth. Uh, and the word chakra meant spinning wheel of energy or a vibration. And at the center of the spinning wheel is a vortex. And the vortex is what attaches to the node. Right. And that, by the way, is the sign of a healer. As a physician, I wear this sometimes. I wonder how many people really understand it. But this was uh, the basis of healing right here. Oops. Now is when I switch. And this ought to be fun. Oops. Does that look like a Mandela? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at a science uh, developed by a Rudolf Steiner doctor. His name was Dr. Hans Yeni. And he's really wanting to look at, uh, at sound and vibration. And what he did was he would take a metal plate, he'd put an oscillator like a vibrator underneath the plate, and he'd put a pile of sand or water on the plate, let's say a pile of sand. The sand would have no geometric form, it had zero form, it'd be like the, in the old horror movies, the blob, it had nothing, this would, it just would be sitting there, it had no life, it just would do nothing. Then he would vibrate the plate and you can simultaneously hear the sound, uh, and if you were to touch the plate, you could feel the vibration, right? It's uh, so simultaneously, and then he would watch what happened to the sand, right? So we're going to now hear a sound. It's a high-pitched sound. When the sound changes, the geometric pattern of the sand will change, right? So we just want to get the sense of we're hearing a wave and simultaneously, we're watching the manifestation of a pattern that's exactly the same thing as the wave. It mimics, in many ways, the concept of, 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 of quantum duality, where you have a particle as a wave and a wave as a particle. Right, so let's take a look at it. Now, if you look at this like this, you go, if you didn't know that that was created by sound or vibration, you didn't know. And you walk in the room, and this is uh, maybe a painting on the wall, 
or maybe it's this sand that's piled up on a plate, and and you didn't see the the oscillator or anything like that. You walk in and think, well, maybe somebody came in and like a Navajo Indian did a sand painting, you know, or a Tibetan did a sand painting. You would look at this and say somebody could have you could draw that. You wouldn't associate that maybe sound could actually create something so beautiful and geometric. But it can, and it does. All sound does. At a quantum level, your thoughts do the same thing. All right, so let's look at it again. Oh, by the way, uh, let's say you go, gosh, I, let's say you're, you're a little anal fixated and there's something about this you don't like. <laughs> and so you'd say, I want to rearrange this. But you don't know that it was created by the sound. And the sound's still going, but you can't hear the sound. <coughs> right? So you go, I want to rearrange this. So you put your hand on that and you start moving the sand around to make it different. What would happen? It would go right back, wouldn't it? Because you didn't change the vibration. Right? right? If you don't, Buddha said, you know, it, it, but we'll see that the frequency is the, going to be the mind. And Buddha said, if you want to change your life, if you want to truly change your life, change your mind. In other words, change your frequency, right? Change uh, the pattern that the frequency makes that you experience the world through. 